Hello and welcome to the training modules on genomic selection. My name is Dr. Clay Sneller. I am the lead plant breeder at the Integrative Genotyping Service and Support Flat Platform. This is a program that's located at the International Livestock Research Institute and is part of the Biosciences for East and Central Africa. You see my email there for the IGSS. I'm also a uh, full professor at Ohio State University where I do wheat breeding and genetics, develop varieties, do research, teach classes, train graduate students, and you can see my my email address for the Ohio State as well. And there's my Skype address as well. I give you all this because I if you have any questions throughout these any of these modules, please feel free to email me or arrange a Skype meeting and we'll talk about it. Now um, while this uh, whole all these modules are in genomic selection we don't go into a great deal of detail here. This is meant for you to understand the concepts of genomic selection, how it can be beneficial to plant breeding, and how you could apply it to your plant breeding program. It's not designed to, designed to teach you all the details of genomic selection. So some of you may see that as a benefit. You get you the main points, and some of you may see that as a, uh, as a bad thing because you want to know more. Let me just start out by saying what is the Integrated Genotyping Support and Service Platform. This is a program that's funded by the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation with the aim to increase genetic gains in plant breeding programs in Africa and animal breeding programs in Africa by providing access to high throughput genotyping and the supports needed to make this, uh, this, use, this uh, platform useful to plant breeding. Our goal is to improve the efficiency of the plant breeding and to enable the use of modern plant breeding technologies by African plant and animal breeders. We're not here simply to provide data. We're not here simply to provide information. We are here to provide all the support needed to make it all come together in your breeding programs. We uh, will focus within the IGSS on topics of breeding technology such as genomic selection and marker-assisted selection. And what we will offer through the IGSS GSS is high throughput, high density SNP genotyping, and also some low density SNP genotyping. Support for data analysis and interpretation of results uh, will give you support in design of molecular plant breeding programs and training programs such as this one here. I always like to start at the beginning, so let's look what are the objectives of plant breeding. And the first one is to develop new cultivars with improved, improved genetic values, and these hopefully will solve grower problems through the improved genetics. Our goal is also to generate data that predicts the future and through selection increase the frequency of favorable alleles in the population. And we always like to try to be as efficient and effective when we use our resources as possible. What do breeders do? Well, we select parents and design matings. When we make those matings, we hope they create variation and much of that variation will come from a recombination. We develop testable progenies that go into evaluations. We evaluate those progeny, oftentimes in multiple environment trials. And there we look at a large number of lines as possible, and we have to deal with genotype by environment interactions. We then do analyses of the data to predict the future value of lines. We predict these values based from phenotypes when you're doing traditional plant breeding. And we supplement that with information from markers when we're doing marker uh, molecular plant breeding. And of course we select the best and go back to the top with our new parents and start over again. So how good are we at this? Well, sometimes not too good. So we look at uh, traits, complex traits like yield, stress tolerance. When we design, select parents and design a mating, we're kind of guessing as to which pair of parents will actually produce a new variety. In fact, that's why we make so many crosses, because we don't know which one is going to produce the new variety. We also want to make crosses. We hope that they will create genetic variation, and hopefully they create a lot of genetic variation and useful genetic variation. But that's also a guess. Developing testable progeny takes a lot of time, takes a lot of money. Our field trials, we always have issues with accuracy. We always want to be more accurate. We're always limited in the number of lines we can test, and this is a very expensive phase of plant breeding. Usually the most expensive phase of plant breeding are these multi-environment trials. We do our analyses to predict the future, and of course we always have to worry about the accuracy of those. So all these areas are places where we actually introduce inefficiency in our plant breeding, and we'd like to remove that. So what is the efficiency of plant breeding? Well, there's many definitions. 
Uh, you could look at the number of new varieties you produce per cross made, the number of lines released per lines tested, number of releases per year, releases per dollar spent, gain or genetic improvement per cycle, improvement per year, improvement per dollar spent. All are very valid assessments of efficiency in plant breeding. I've highlighted the top two in red because I'm going to show you examples of those. Now I find that many plant breeders actually do not know what their efficiency is, and yet it's not that hard to come up with an estimate. Uh, perhaps the reason is because the results of it is not, are not too good. Here's efficiency in plant breeding in my program, Ohio State University weed breeding program. If I make 300 crosses, one of them probably will produce a new variety, meaning 299 failed to accomplish my objective of developing new variety. So my uh, success rate here is not too good. If I take 2,000 lines and put them in yield trials and test them for all my traits that are important to me, about one out of 2,000 will become a new variety. I show a grid there that's like 2,000 plots in the field and there's one of them that's darkened in. That is my new variety that I hope to find. Basically breeding is an inefficient numbers game. Now you may look at some of these percentages and say, well, Dr. Sneller doesn't know what he's doing. That's why his efficiency low is so low. But actually these numbers are similar when you check with other programs and you should be checking this in your program to see how good are you. So can molecular plant breeding help us become more efficient. Well, all those areas with stars are places where I feel the molecular plant breeding can help you uh, become more efficient. Selecting better parents, creating more useful variation, evaluating progeny in fields more efficiently, and coming up with more accurate predictions. So what are the main molecular plant breeding technologies that, uh, that are being used? Of course, marker-assisted selection is one that most people are familiar with and is very effective for genes with major effects. The newer one is genomic selection and this is the one of course we're going to talk about in these modules and genomic selection can work for genes with major effects and for genes with small effects. Again here's my uh, efficiency in my current breeding program, the one out of uh, 2000. If I do molecular plant breeding I might increase that efficiency up to 4 out of 2,000. Now that's not a whole lot different. You look through that grid, you know, there's only three more new lines in there. You say that's not a big change, but yet that is, you are now four times more efficient than you used to be. Four times more likely to find a new variety. And that is certainly worth doing. Molecular plant breeding complements your traditional plant breeding. It does not replace it you need to be strong in traditional plant breeding before you start doing molecular plant breeding. It improves your probability of success and improves your return on your investment in the traditional plant breeding. So what is efficiency? How did I come up with the fact that I feel that one out of 2,000 of my lines tested is actually becomes a new variety? Well, it's very simple. I look at uh, of all the lines tested, how many are acceptable for the trait yield? In other words, yield better or equal to a high yield check. What percentage of my lines that I put in my testing have acceptable levels of resistance to Fusarium head blight, a major disease of wheat? How many are resistant to another array of pests, have acceptable levels of resistance to other array of pests? About 10%. 45% are good for quality traits and 75% are good for agronomic traits. You multiply those probabilities together and you come up with 1 out of 2,000. Now if I want to be 95% certain that I'm going to find that 1 out of 2,000, I actually need to test 6,000 lines. So if you evaluate 1,000 lines per year, then you'll be 95% certain of finding a new variety after 6 years. As we all know, breeding is a numbers game. And really molecular plant breeding doesn't change that. It remains a numbers game, but it helps you deal with the numbers more effectively and get more bang out of the numbers that you put into your testing. How do I come up with that value of uh, 6,000 lines need to be tested to be 95% certain? Well, I use this equation shown right here. And here's the formula for it in Excel. I'm not going to go through the details of it. You can look at this yourself at your leisure. But there is my 1 out of 6,000. And again, multiplying those probabilities from that one table comes up with my 1 out of 2,000. 
So at any time during any of these modules, of course, you can pause it, look at the slides, go back, re-listen to it, whatever you want to do to absorb the information. So that is the end of the first half of Module 1, and we will continue with the next one.